Hi, welcome to the Digital Yacht How-To video series. In today's video we're going to be looking at how we can get AIS data on Smart Attract 2014. Now let's open Smart Attract. Now the implementation of AIS on Smart Attract is, uh, is, is, uh, is very good and there's lots of uh, functionality related to AIS uh, and hopefully today I'll be able to show you most of it. So uh, let's start. Now I do have to explain that uh, unfortunately I'm not on a boat doing this video. Um, I'm actually uh, in my home office on top of Ports Downhill which is what you can see there on the chart but hopefully that won't make too much difference to the um, to the presentation that I'll give you now. Um, so first of all let's turn on the AIS targets. So I've got Class B, one of our AIT2000 Class B transponders connected so uh, even with the little area that I've got here we're picking up AIS targets quite a long way away and you can see them all uh, shown here so they're all colored basically it's a colored triangle uh, and each of the different colors represents a different category of vessel uh, also you can have these uh, these sort of uh, text boxes that uh, follow the the target which give you the name of the, the vessel and what uh, whether it's underway or moored um, so up here we can go key to target colors and that will give a little box which shows you so uh, I was actually just looking at a tanker there uh, must be moored out uh, just off the Isle of Wight uh, green cargo vessel passenger vessel so you've got all the different colors there uh, it's quite a useful key that um, you can turn on and off different types of vessels although to be honest I very rarely use that because it's quite useful to have um, from a safety point of view have all of those targets turned on um, let's go to the AIS menu um, <clears throat> so you can actually filter out the AIS targets that you've got so you can show just the ones that are a target uh, that are th sorry just the targets that are a threat now the threat um, whether it's a threat or not is based on uh, whether the uh, closest point of approach or how close they're going to come to you uh, and I'll talk a bit more about the closest point of approach in a, in a moment um, so let's go back there. Um, let's zoom in a little bit and you'll see the sort of information that's displayed. So here we go. Let's have a look at this vessel here. So let's just click on that. So it's a, it's a passenger ship, St. Clair. Um, and uh, that's heading across the, uh, off the Isle of Wight, I guess. Um, and here you've got two lines projecting out from the from the the vessel the dotted line is its course over the ground from its GPS and the solid line is its heading um, from its uh, gyro compass usually on a, on a larger vessel and you'll notice that little um, bend at the end of the line that's its uh, turn indicator so basically that's showing that it's going slightly to starboard um, and it's quite useful often um, to know to, to have that indicated so that you know whether the boat's going to be turning towards or away from you. Uh, so that's quite useful. Um, now these uh, little text labels, you, you can define those, you can turn those on if they become too cluttered um, or you can decide what information is included in those little text boxes. But if we zoom in a little bit more, because one of the good things that uh, Smart Attract does is it actually draws the vessels to scale on the chart. So here we go. We've got St Faith, which is a, which is the car ferry to the Isle of Wight, and that is actually being drawn now to to, to scale. Um, so if we click on on that um, and bring up the the information, uh, let's go. Okay, let's just bring that up on there. There we go. So it tells us here that it's 77 meters long, 21 millime uh, millimeters, 21 meters wide, and uh, it draws 2.4 meters or 2.4 meters in height actually. Um, so that's the the car ferry. Uh, I'm just wondering if there's going to be any other big vessels around tonight. Um, let's have a look up at. In fact, probably some of these moored out here are quite large tankers um, so if we zoom into those yep so you see you get to a certain scale in, in the chart display and it changes from being a, a triangle uh, to 
being actually drawn to scale. Uh, there's that, that vessel there. Uh, it's got a very small text label because that's actually moored. Um, so the, the vessels that are underway have a have a different uh, label displayed and you can actually get the actual speed of the vessel shown in the label. So all of that is set up in the AS properties. Um, so the first thing you see when you go into AS properties is a complete list of all the the uh, vessels that are around you. Um, you can also decide to show this is you can also just filter out the different vessels that it displays. You can uh, set the different uh, colours and, and outlines um, on on here as well, uh, and it will you can decide the the line type if it's going to be a threat or uh, or not. Um, you've got here uh, moving vessels. You want to know the name, the speed over the ground, and the status. Whereas stationary vessels, it just shows the name. Um, and then if it's a threat it will give you the call sign, the MMSI number, so you can make a DSC call to, for instance to them if you know their MMSI number um, and the closest point of approach as well if they're going to be a threat to you and you can decide the size of the text as well whether it's medium small so you've got lots and lots of uh, things that you can set up to, to, to get the best possible AIS display um, here's where you set up the closest point of approach alarms uh, so basically here a moving target becomes a threat when its closest point of approach is less than one nautical mile so uh, so in fact you know you could depending upon where you are um, if you're right out in the um, in uh, clear waters you might want to make that quite large but if you're in very congested waters you might want to reduce that down so that not every target is being detected as a threat um, and here the time to closest point of approach so that's 10 minutes um, so it will sound an alarm 10 minutes before the closest point of approach occurs um, that's what the time to closest point of approach does um, and, it, and you can have different set of threats if, it, if a vessel is moored or stationary and you can turn on off the CPA alarm uh, you've got what else have we got here um, oh, this is if you want to, to program the transponder um, but uh, let's go ahead. okay, and this is quite a useful. And if you've got this, if you've got Smart Attract connected up to a Class A uh, transponder, you can actually use the Smart Attract to send the voyage data to the Class A, rather than laboriously enter the data onto the Class A, which normally doesn't have a proper keyboard. You can do it all very quickly from from Smart Attract. So uh, yeah, that's that's all the the AIS settings and everything um, and the the AIS you know display is very clear for instance if one of these vessels was going to be a threat to us and we were actually sailing out there now in, in the Solent it would actually plot an orange uh, warning line showing you where the closest point of approach is going to, to uh, occur um, so you're constantly uh, updated on the the threats that are around you yep. very good AIS implementation on Smart track. A lot of time and effort was put into to getting the uh, the target display and the alarms to work very very well. Okay, well I think that's uh, covered everything on the AIS. I hope you found that useful, and uh, I'll uh, see you in the next video.